in Michigan. He's with us here. Mad Dog Unleashed. Darren, good afternoon. How are you today? Dog, what's going on? Hello, Darren. Nice to have you aboard. What's on your mind today? What do you have listen, for me? I listen to you every day. First time calling in. Nice to have you aboard, Darren. Let me hear your thoughts. Uh, let me hear your thoughts. What do you have for me? I got two points. First one, Steelers. Yeah. This has probably got to be the greatest collection of talent on a team to not do anything. They got two all pro guys on the O line, top five quarterback in the league, best receiver in the game since Jerry Rice, and the best running back in the NFL. Do you agree with me on that or not? Uh, basically, yes, I do. That's a five okay. excellent offensive players. Uh, the other receivers are pretty good, too. Um, they had tight end. Donovan is getting better. Uh, that team, I know they're in the same conference with New England, but they never beat New England. And they've lost some games they just should not have lost to. Yes, they lost a couple years ago to Denver because Brown didn't play. Bell's been hurt a lot. But um, yesterday's loss is inexcusable from their standpoint. Inexcusable. Second, second point. Second point. If you're just a, a casual fan in Minnesota, you think, uh, and let's just say you're a restaurant bar owner, you probably do not want the Vikings to win because you're going to lose out on a lot of revenue from all the Philadelphia fans flying in. Uh, that's for, a very uh, good point. Um, yeah, the hotel business, there will be some lost income from the local population, but there'll be so many Minnesotans, you know, prowling the streets Thursday and Friday and Saturday, and you might make up for it with all the activity. I mean, there might be 30,000 Minnesota fans in downtown Minnesota all of Super Bowl week. There will not be 30,000 Eagle fans. So that is part of the equation here. Go ahead. Next. That is it, sir. All right. Good call. Uh, you you will lose some business because the hotel business and everything else, but there'd be more of the local fan roaming around than there will be. The, the Philly fan will come in for the weekend. The Minnesota fans are all week. They're all week. So it's a little different from that standpoint. Larry in Westport, Connecticut. Larry, good afternoon. How are you today? Hey, hey doggy. Hello, da- so, hello, Larry. I What's called- going on? Let me hear. Well, I, I called to talk about uh, what happened at the end of the Pittsburgh game, and no one's brought it up, and I'll hold that for a second, because in the interim, I'm hearing you talk about Blake Bortles, and you watched a different game than I watched. He had 214 yards passing, right. 45 of which were on one play to that kid, Keenan Cole. You're telling me, so you're telling me, you're telling me Bortles you're didn't play, you're, you're telling me Bortles didn't play a good game? No, he played, but you're saying if you kick off to him, Bortles can throw these long passes. That and is, this I said a six-yard completion. We're talking about a six-yard completion. That's all they need. They need one six-yard completion, and the game is over. That's it. And uh, they, see, they, they, don't need 30, do that. they don't need 30 yards, Larry. They don't need points. They need a six-yard pass play to the running back out of the backfield and let him run for six yards. That is, and even if he and runs out of bounds, him. and even if he runs out of bounds, who cares? All you need right. is one first down, and the game is over. I, okay, I agree with that. But you were saying, like, Bortles was strong with these great passes. He threw into double coverage many times. But I'm not calling about that. I just wanted to say I didn't see that. Would you saw All right, well, fair enough. I, uh, listen, and, his team scored okay. 40-something points, and he's the quarterback. you got to give yes. him some credit. Go ahead. Right. Look, but I would love to kick off and force him to throw that six-shot pass when everybody is up at the line. All right. Pittsburgh would love that. Anyhow, what I called about is what infuriates me with all these coaches, and I'm sure you're going to agree with me. They needed two scores, Pittsburgh. There's 30 seconds left. They need a field goal and yeah. a touchdown. I am brought it up, the and he's only- right. Kick the field goal. 100%. Yep. You have to. Why are they going for a touchdown? Because if you go score a touchdown, you get an onside kick. You can't kick a 70-yard field goal. You can throw a 70-yard Hail Mary. You need a field goal there and then a onside kick because then you can throw a long pass. You can't get a touchdown, get the onside kick, and kick a field goal. That I agree with you on. What are they thinking, Doggy? That took them too long. Uh, I agree. They were so close. That's why they did what they did. But you are right about that. That one we will agree on. Derek in Alabama. He's on Mad Dog Unleashed. Derek, good afternoon. How are you today, pal? Hey, afternoon, dog. Thanks for taking the call, man. You got it, Derek. Thank you. What's on your mind? Let me hear. Hey, so I wanted to uh, call in and talk to you for a minute about Blake Bortles and his future. But first, I want to make sure we got the perspective of his year right. I think you got to give Blake Bortles a lot of credit for the month of December he had. I think you got to give him for the credit for the way he played against the Steelers. But let's be real. Jacksonville is where they are this year because of Todd Wash and what he has done with that defense. The free agency they had at the beginning of the year, bringing in guys like Calais Campbell, Barry Church, uh, the, you know, the last 
couple drafts they've had building that defense, it's finally coming to fruition for them. So that's why they are where they are. But I'm a big Blake Bortles guy. I've liked him since he came up under George O'Leary at UCF, winning the Sugar Bowl, having that undefeated season. I like him a lot, but I'm also a realist. They've already picked up his 2018 option for next year, right? Based on the game that Blake Bortles, and this is one I want to know if you agree with me, based on the game that Blake Bortles played in Pittsburgh yesterday, he has done enough to be the starting quarterback for the Jacksonville Jaguars. I, you know what? They probably, good point, Derek. You must be a relative. They probably will leave Bortles alone right now. They probably will go into next year with him as his quarterback. Him as their quarterback, I happen to agree. Jimmy in Nova Scotia uh, up there uh, in Canada. Jim, good afternoon. How are you today? I'm good, Christopher. Uh, just quickly, uh, two quick things. Uh, one is I was one of those weird people that said Jacksonville would win because I don't like <laughs> Pittsburgh's defense. And as, and as good as they've played, I agree with you on Tomlin. I never thought they could win a big game anyway. And the other part was Jackson, Jacksonville is, I call them, unconventional. And when you play an unconventional team, it's hard to prepare for them. And they, they play such good defense and they create so many turnovers that it's why I figured they had a really good chance to win. The question I wanted to ask you on football was you mentioned about coaching and Tom being overrated. You were on the fence about McCarthy. I wanted to ask you about Andy Reid. When's the last time he's won a playoff game, and is he overrated? Uh, yeah, well, listen, we have talked about Reid a lot. Reid doesn't win playoff games. He hasn't won that many for Kansas City. He beat Houston two years ago. Uh, Reid can take you a certain way, but he's never going to win a big game either. Now, they're probably – he's going to coach another 10, 15 years. There probably will be a game or a season uh, in the next whenever where, you know, they win some playoff games and he has a chance to win a Super Bowl because he's knocking at the door enough times. The division isn't very good. Uh, you know, San Diego, Chargers are bad. Raiders, you know, we all know about their issues. Denver doesn't have a quarterback. So we have a chance to be in a postseason. He will have a couple of more chances, but I would not put my money on him winning a championship. You're right. Mad Dog Unleashed. 18 in front of the hour back after this. 